The mirror button allows the user to mirror the image that you're seeing on the GenieVision visualizer. So whatever I'm seeing on the left hand side of the screen, I can see a mirror image of it on the right hand side of the screen. The freeze button allows me to freeze the image that I'm seeing. So I can place an object on the visualizer, press the freeze button and that image then stays on the screen while I can do something else on the visualizer without that object being there. The negative button turns an image from its positive to its negative form. So I can use it to reverse text from being black on white to white on black or to put a negative on there and turn it back into a positive. The title button allows me to grab a title which could be a lesson objective or a key question or key vocabulary and leave it displayed at the top of the screen. The dynamic and static button slows down the frame rate so it emphasizes any movement that's taking place on the visualizer. The far and the near buttons allow me to manually override the autofocus so I can focus on what's nearest to the lens or what's furthest away. The up and down buttons allow me to scroll the motorized head up and down a page of text which is on the visualizer. The split screen button allows me to split the screen so I can hold something on the left hand side and then have the right hand side as a live image coming through. The PPW and PIN are for use with the RS232 connection on the side of the visualizer when I want to link this up and control another device. This button here has CCD, PC1 and PC2 next to it and this allows me to change channels so at the moment you can see it's blue, which means it's linked to the charge coupled device or the camera. When I change it to green, it's now looking for an input from the PC1, which could be a laptop or a PC. And PC2 could be the same thing again. So we've got three different channels that we can swap between and we're using this like a switch to switch us from one to the other. The lamp button switches on either the lights at the top or the lights underneath or no lights at all and again it scrolls round. The video button allows me to pull in feed from the video at the back of the unit. So if I'm wanting to play a DVD or a tape then I can pull that feed in and then press that button and then that video would be played through the visualizer and output onto the screen. The auto button is used if I need to reset all the settings to their default setting. So pressing the auto would force it to auto focus and reset any alterations that I've made. The plus and the minus button here allow me to zoom in or zoom out on the object that I've placed on the visualizer. If you forget what any of these buttons do down at the bottom of the visualizer then they're all explained up here at the top. So it's a quick reference guide should you forget what anything does. The visualizer has a remote control which is stored handily in the side of the unit so it's there whenever I need it. So if I go to the side now, flick up the switch and pull out the unit, there it is. So here we have the remote control which we've just taken out of the side of the GenieVision 6100 and you can see we've got many controls here which are the same as they're on the unit itself. The first button at the top here is the power button which enables me to power the unit up and down. The save and recall buttons here allow me to save the image and then recall the image and I can do that up to seven times with seven images being held in the visualizer's memory. The lamp button will control the lights, switching either the lights above or the lights beneath on or off. The freeze button allows me to freeze the image. The negative button will reverse an image so I can see something in its positive and its negative format. So I could have black on white or white on black. The mirror button allows me to mirror or reflect an image so I can see a mirror image of what I have on the left hand side of the screen projected on the right hand side. 
split button allows me to split the screen into two, freezing what I can see on the left and allowing a live feed still to come through on the right. The D and S, or dynamic and static button, allows me to capture or show emphasize movement that's taking place underneath the visualizer. The XGA button is used to set up my projector. The black and white button allows me to add or remove color from anything that I'm projecting from the visualizer. Title allows me to grab a line of text and display it along the top edge of the screen that's being projected so I can show things such as a lesson objective or a key question or key vocabulary. The power and the input button here are used with the RS232 connection so that I can actually control something like a projector. The text button allows me to enhance text. If I'm just projecting text then I can darken and make that text a little bit bolder. The buttons that are shown in yellow here allow me to zoom in and zoom out but if I have a large three-dimensional object I might want to force the visualizer to either show what's nearest or what's furthest away and if I want to override that again and set it back to autofocus I would press the auto button in the center. The volume up and volume down would be in connection with the RS232 input again if I was controlling a device that, device that had volume control on it. Video would pull a video feed in and CCD PC1 PC2 allows me to swap from one device from another. CCD being the camera, PC1 and PC2 being other devices that are connected into the visualizer. On the bottom row we have the scroll button which allows me to control the motorized head of the unit to scroll up and down the page. And the brightness button allows me to adjust the brightness on the image that's being shown through the video cap software and also alter the contrast of the blue and the red within that image as well. All the connections on the back of the Genie Vision are clearly labelled for any other appliance that I want to either pull in or push out. So I have audio in and video in and out. I've got projector output, computer in and out, and a power in and out so I can power the device itself but also relay power to another device that I might have connected. If I want to use the visualizer to record something across a classroom for instance, if I drop the head down and then remove the short throw lens here, then I can throw over a much bigger distance. So by raising the arm back up and turning the head, I would now be able to record something across the other side of the classroom.